if you don't follow the dress code, they might attack you. Um, <laughs> does this mean that I have to dress up as a schoolgirl? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not willing, but hi. Welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about the End Maiden and the Ruins. We'll quickly go through all of this, but I really want to focus the majority of the time on Siobhan as well as Erica. Have a look at the evaluations, how they can possibly fit in, because we've got some, some pretty exciting stuff. And honestly, with the run-through of this event, it's probably good because the majority of your newer players, especially for the ones who came through Dragon Maid, this will be like your first proper event, and so just like expect some pretty nice things from it. Generally speaking, the event formats are kind of like same same, it's that the story stages are different, they introduce new mechanics, stuff like that. Alright, and so with all of that being said, let's jump right into the content, let's begin with The End, Maiden and the Ruins Extreme Depth 873 meters underground part 1. Oh, that was a that was a very long name. Okay, so very very standard stuff. We've got start navigation and the Aurorian trial starting on this first day of the event, and then this bad boy is going to last for two and a half weeks. So generally speaking, this one over here, start navigation, it is the title of the first half of the event where we have our normal stages, a lot of the story, and generally speaking, we will be getting a lot of event currencies from this start navigation. And so after that, we have stray into danger. So this is very likely going to be our hard mode or our very hard mode or whatever, some kind of difficulty change. Sometimes has story, sometimes does not. And then last of all, we've got We've got, we've got a vending machine. I guess they're trying to be creative by not being creative because this is kind of like an alternate universe. I don't know, but we'll see. A vending machine is very likely going to be our shop, our currency event shop. Play through all of the different stages and then go into vending machine and we, uh, we put in some coins and we get some goodies. Is that a fire hydrant? No, that's a post office box thing. Okay, moving on. So, like I said, the event consists of two phases. We've got start navigation and straight into danger. However, the nice thing about this event and like all of the events up from a certain point ago, they started introducing these things like energy events. So it's like uh, 20 of the energy. Essentially, it's your event energy. And so what that means is that if we use the event energy to clear out the event, we have our normal stamina. So our prism to just like throw wherever. However, it looks like this time they've actually upped it to 30 energy drinks so they've upped a cap i i can't actually remember if they did this this time or if they did it last time but anyway that's kind of it for like the stages normal mode hard mode use this energy stuff for the normal mode and get currency and buy stuff from the vending machine all right moving through we've got a vending machine which is pretty freaking lit because it is going to contain one tile converting aurorian selection so one of these four five star aurorians packed beverly klecken and faust as for which one i would pick i would say probably Probably go for the one that you don't have if you guys are new and if you do have all of them try get an impactful breakthrough so not the one that gives like HP or attack but something that gives like a skill effect for example a false BT2 or something like it's probably gonna give an extra tile on conversion if you hold on to the active skill something like that right so but again first priority is to have all four of them all right but otherwise it looks like we can actually get a park bench and also get a vending machine from inside the vending machine I don't know man we're getting a a little meta over here but otherwise pretty straightforward stuff very much the usual we've got the ancient coins which is probably going to be our currency the event currency and then we've also got an event avatar this one's this one's pretty funny it's siobhan with dark circles around her eyes i I can kind of relate. All right, and so now we are on part two. Number five over here, it's essentially saying, oh, here are some like limited items and here is how you get them. Which leads us into number six, Siobhan and Erica. Now, this is an interesting one. This, I can't remember if this is the first time or not, but like we have one six star and one five star new recruits only. Interesting. I think it's a good thing because it means I can save up more. I don't know if I'm going for Siobhan or not. I mean, there are a lot of, um, a lot of features that she she has that are pretty enticing let's put it that way but for you newer people we've got the limited time recruitment summary limited time does not mean that these characters are limited in the traditional gacha sense so after their recruitment banner ends they are going to be added into the mainstay pool so that means that you could theoretically get spooked by them one day all right and so moving on we've got special event book five so this is pretty nice because we do have the nadine skin as well as the maggie and then a whole bunch of other stuff very much your classical battle pass and then lastly i believe I believe we have outfits and skins so we have this eve outfit it's like oh my god it's so chef's kiss my guys i unfortunately missed out on eve i couldn't get her and i'm not willing to dump any more at lumamba so for you guys who are going to get her outfit man i'm jelly 
I'm freaking jelly. And speaking of outfits, we have the hero outfit coming back. Please, please, tour dog, give us the motorcycle, man. <laughs> That'd be so lit. Moving through, moving through, it looks like we are just going to be getting a whole bunch of different packs. I'm always eyeing this one because it's pretty decent. 120 Lumamba, one special star flare, and 120 Prism. I think outside of like the best value packs, such as like your monthlies and like that starter pack, which was really good. I think it was like 20 pulls for 16 or $20, something like that. This is probably the next best one after that. So consider it if you are a bit of a spender. Lastly, we do have the 120 prism and two carriers per day for i believe six yep six days over here be pretty nice it's just a little bit more progression and so with all of that out of the way let's start talking about siobhan as well as erica pretty interesting units let me put it that way so let's start off with siobhan uh really interesting because they are starting to release more converters and more like archetypes of converters right especially with bethlehem where she was the first unit to be able to like pretty much point and click four different tiles in any location that you want. Very, very powerful. The flexibility is pretty insane. Very much like, in my eyes at least, like an Iridin. And so Siobhan is kind of like in the middle of the spectrum between like inflexibility, so I'm talking like your IC, your Nikki, where it's predetermined, all the way up to your Bethlehem, right? Where you can actually like pick up any four tiles. So Siobhan essentially is always going to get you like a little cluster of tiles that convert to forest. So anywhere on the map, click on one tile tile one tile here and then with some variable distance around this tile you can pick another tile to also convert into green so for example if i pick one down here and then one two gap and then i pick another one over there there will be four tiles in total one two three four so i pick the first one and the fourth one and then all of these tiles turn green that is the one by four range and so i don't actually know if this works diagonally if i did like a one tile here and then one tile here and then the two tiles in between turn green i don't know we'll see but on the other hand we also have a two by two possibility so we have one here one here and then the other two corners also get converted so for a total of four tiles and so the two tiles that you actually select so whether it be like this one and this one or this one and this one or this one and this one something like that those two tiles become enhanced tiles which is it's fabulous it's literally what forest is all about you got your hero you've got like so many other forest units making use of that mechanic and then what is even better in my opinion actually is the during aurora time reaches 15 chain combos to reduce active skill cooldown by one round i uh there's there's a lot to unpack here the first is the cd so cd3 preemptive strike as we all know this is a maxed out siobhan we don't know whether she's going to be cd4 and no preemptive or cd3 and preemptive but like lose an effect like maybe lose the aurora time effect i'm referring more from like a zero bt point of view so if at zero bt she is on four cooldown and no preemptive I think that's not that great. Very similar issues to Bethlehem where the tile per round conversion is just not really worth it. And to top it off, like she's also constrained by only being able to make like little clusters or like a single line. So what I am hoping for is a CD3, no preemptive, but lose this last effect over here. So during Aurora time, it reaches 15 chain combos to reduce active skills cooldown by one round. However, that effect is actually pretty freaking good because if you think about it, you could like chop her active skill cooldown by quite a fair bit especially when you're running end game teams like you are going to be running those 15 chain combos i honestly think it's more likely that it's going to be four cooldown no preemptive with this aurora time effect here and if that's the case like it's okay it's solid it's good i wouldn't say it's like ultra ultra good i probably personally would still take a nikki or a pact over it if that was the case two round cooldown for four tiles is just it's just really insane it's hard to not play like that anymore all right and so with all of that being being said let's move on we've got spider rupture over here and so 145 or 150 percent damage is so essentially it's a sniper kit you're dealing some amount of damage to some amount of enemies within some amount of clusters that's essentially it however what's interesting is that the only difference between the 9 and the 13 is that you're going from attacking three enemies to all enemies within four surrounding clusters and so that's kind of cool because like the 9 to 13 it's it's expanding her i guess you could kind of call it the aoe capability of siobhan just that it's more a about like hitting more targets than anything else that's all and so that's kind of like it's kind of okay like it's probably going to look pretty weak especially with her converter stats 2.6k attack at max 
yeah, it's it's gonna be like, it's, it's okay. All right, and so let's talk about her equipment skill, web shield. So this is a pretty interesting one. So essentially she gains stacks and to gain these stacks, these web mark stacks, you have to actually pass through green tiles. And if you manage to pass through enhanced green tiles, then you will get more stacks for that. So with these stacks, you clear all of the stacks before you take damage. So I predict that like when you get hit, before you get hit and only when you do get hit, do these stacks get cleared. And when they clear, you gain a shield equal to 15% of Siobhan's defense for every stack cleared. Sounds okay. Let's keep going with this one. If web mark stacks are more than 10, gains an additional shield equal to 15 percent of Siobhan's HP when gaining shield from webmark. Um, how do I say this? I'm always a massive fan of more offensive equipment skills, offensive chain combos, especially when it comes to like some end game content, right? So however, especially when you're thinking in the context of fire. So if you guys do know like the Victoria IC combo for the sustain in the fire element, it's actually possible to run no healer, no Alice or whatever, and just purely sustain just from the Victoria and the IC. It works in a lot of content, not all content, but in a lot of content. And so the reason I bring that up is because I see something similar here. I see Siobhan working with somebody else to be able to like have the minimum amount of sustain to not run Uriah or like some other forest healer that you may have required before but you may not actually need now. And so whilst I usually trash on like defensive equipment skills, I am I'm starting to see the light guys. I'm starting to see the light. Maybe Noah will be good. I don't know. I don't okay that was a bit too far. Let's move on. And so all in all is Siobhan worth rolling for? I, I think so. I absolutely think so. Well, first of all, she's a freaking converter and converters are always relevant. Not only that, but she is also like one hot mommy. Like, oh my God. But Kuming aside, like this kit, it just feels very, very useful. So like, for example, again, Victoria, she acts as a detonator, also bleeds, but also heals. Very much multifunction. So for Shivon over here, we have conversion as well as defensive shielding. Sustain kind of thing, right? Where we may actually one day be able to run no healer on the forest element. And so yes, I would roll for Shivon. I, I, yeah, I certainly would. I don't know if I will, but I would. And I'm only saying that because I got scared of the collab and exclusive units. The fact that they exist, I gotta save. That's that's like my opinion. All right, and so that is Siobhan in a nutshell. So let's have a look at Erica. Erica is a pretty interesting one as well. So attacks in any one of the eight directions and deals 210% damage to enemies along the path and adjacent tiles. So in a nutshell, if you know Kana, if you know Michael, if you know Karon, it's very much like that uh, three tile in width beam. And then from her position, she can either go like north, south, east, west, and then like northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest. And then when she actually actually fires it off, she gets to paralyze one random enemy, but also reset all non-yellow tiles in range. Okay. <sighs> That kind of sounds a bit stacked, you know? So first of all, the paralyzed use cases are pretty clear. It's very much like where you don't want the enemies to move too much. The thing for me that comes to mind is the arena thing. Like we've got all those discs in the room in our Colossus where we have to like fight people, like that fight club room. If you guys still have not figured it out yet, like paralyze essentially cucks the enemy like ultra, ultra hard. And so therefore with just the paralyze alone, it's already pretty decent. However, it also resets all non-yellow tiles in range. That's, that's pretty good. It's certainly not conversion. You don't get any yellow tiles with certainty, but you might, you know, you might. There is definitely a chance for net gain. So this skill, CD3 preemptive, if I think of zero BT, I'm thinking maybe CD4 no preemptive, that kind of sucks. However, they might go with the Kana approach where it's like CD3 no preemptive, but like less damage or maybe like less of a skill. And if that was the case, like that's pretty decent. It's okay. All right, and so moving through unknown Electra wave for the chain combo, it is going to be a column chain combo. Okay, expensive for not very much damage for the fact that she only has 2.9k attack. Like it's okay. It's okay. It's nothing to write home about, certainly. But then after that, we have Paranormal Thunder, which could be pretty cracked out. So look at this. Increases Erica's damage by 4% to enemies on yellow tiles for every cluster away. And on top of that, grants Thunder Aurorian teammates a 50% damage bonus. And so this one is pretty interesting. However, it is quite conditional. So I can see how this is like kind of balanced. Erica is over here. We've got the enemy over here and there are two tiles in between them. This enemy is standing on a yellow tile. So that means that this 
this conditional is met. And so because there are two tiles in between them, that technically counts as two clusters and so therefore she would get an increase in damage by 8%. On top of that, the rest of her teammates are also going to be getting a 50% damage bonus. I suspect it's just going to be final damage. So for example, if your Michael or Revy or whoever was going to hit 10k, they are now going to hit, what, 15k. Decent, potentially cracked. I might have interpreted the first part wrong, like with the clusters away. But like all that being said, she could be cracked. She could be the most cracked thing in the world. But there is something that we do need to think about. And that is, well, how exactly does she fit into the team then? Because for units like Siobhan, we've got like converters, converter, replace converter. It's actually quite easy. One in, one out. However, if we go with something like this one, a supporter class, does that mean we remove a detonator or a sniper, like a DPS class? And then hope that this equipment skill will the 50% damage, that it actually brings a net gain in damage? Yeah, these kinds of questions I'm still kind of figuring out because I am not 100% sure as to who I would replace. If you guys do have an idea on that, let me know down in the comments below. But again, with that, I think Erica, like she is a solid unit. If anything, she actually might look a little bit busted. But I'm not exactly seeing anything that is 100% essential here, right? Especially if you've got like your Gronru that can give you Paralyze. There is not really anything here that stands out like crazy. Whereas with Siobhan, like... <laughs> Look at that pretty face. But being a converter already naturally puts you like at the very top already. And so therefore, should you roll for Erica? I don't think so. I, I don't think you should go in and like spend 40 rolls looking for Erica, considering again, she is a permanent unit and you may get spooked by her in the future. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Unless you like her. I mean, look at that cute face. You know, maybe you do like her. But with that, it is time for me to pass on the question to you guys. How do you guys feel about Siobhan and Erica and their kits? Did you feel that I rated them unfairly? Did you feel that Erica maybe is like the total crack house that she's looking to be? Or do you think that Siobhan is actually pretty busted as well? I, I honestly don't think Siobhan is like crazy crazy. I really do think that she is like just balanced, especially with the CD3 over here, depending on what that is. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video so thank you guys so much but otherwise if you did like this video then please consider liking it and if you would like to see more then please subscribe and as your girl erica once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye